This exercise I'm about to show is called the Greyhound. So it's not a strength exercise. There's, uh, there's some exercises that look similar to it. This is a bit different the way that it's designed. It's not a strength exercise per se. It's an exercise to switch off unwanted muscle activity, especially in the hip flexors. So the psoas, which comes off about L1 level in the front of the spine and traveling down onto the, deep onto the lesser trochanter in the femur here. And also helps the iliacus muscle that comes off the inside bowl of your pelvis onto the same spot. So those muscles lift your knee or compress your, your spine so you can stabilize your back. Or it makes you pull yourself forward when you've injured your back. So we want to lessen the activity in that. It's called the greyhound because when you, if you see a greyhound when it's running at full speed, its back is actually straight. So its arms forward. One or, one or both arms is forward, the leg is out as well, and the back's still straight. You'll see it in a lot of animals when they stretch out. So they're able to hold a straight line through their spine while they lengthen out through the limbs here. If that doesn't happen, the spine starts doing this, this motion, which isn't, which isn't bad. For this exercise, we don't want this to happen. So what it would look like if I used my leg and I let my, lost my axis, central axis, it would do this, see how the spine moves? Whereas if I keep my spine straight, I can move my leg independently of the spine having to do something. And with the arm that I'm not also doing this with the spine, the spine stays straight, I can lengthen through the arm without the spine becoming compromised. So this is what this is designed to teach, to let muscles relax so you can keep a good engagement through the spine. So you'll need to have socks on and uh, something slippery, so I've got a piece of cardboard here. So you feel onto your pelvis the knobbly bits, so the, the bones of the pelvis and the therapists will show you how to find that. It's the monitoring points. What we don't want is that the pelvis at all does that. You feel these points move down. We don't want them to go up this way. We don't want to go up, want to go down either. They stay still, so they just stay still. So the head, you have a, a gentle lengthening through your head as if you had a balloon pulling you up or someone gently trashing your neck. So we don't want the head like that. So we pull up through the crown of the head. So the chin automatically does this. There's just a gentle lengthening through there. And I'm letting the back relax. So my pelvis relaxes anywhere that's touching the floor. I let it relax like melting plastic, just relaxing into the floor. So we're getting rid of unnecessary muscle activity, even just delay here. So we're aware of that little bit of impulse going up, lengthening and then relaxing again. So your hands on here. So what we want here, I want to let the this area here focus on here, especially on this side, I'm doing one leg at a time. On this side, I want to relax all down through this line here at the front. So I'm trying not to use any muscle activity at all for this. So I let the legs slide out. So I'm letting the weight of the leg come out. And I feel a little bit of activity in here, so I want to put my mind into here and make it soften as if it's like this, that it goes, just relax. Initially, your mind better straighten your leg. If you get to about here and you move any further with your leg, your hip wants to go. So you don't want that. So you pull it back in and you drag it in with your, with your hamstring. I'm aiming to not use here. Body has a pattern where it wants to just use the muscle here and pull it back in using this muscle. It can use the hamstring and the glute to do this job instead is what we want. So let it slide out and then to relax here. By this muscle relaxing, it helps the hamstring and the glute to have to do the work. So here I'm letting it totally out and I haven't lost here at all. When I come in, you can think about a balloon on your knee and the balloon's pulling your knee up. When it's just less and less effort, I'm making a little bit of a drag force with my heel coming back this way. And letting it slide out again. So I'm actually feeling a little bit warm through here now. So that's the different blood flow going on. Think about the balloon now drawing me back up. I'm aiming to soften here, 
minimum amount of force. The best way to do this. Another visual that you can do is think about an elastic band connected to your buttock, to your heel. So as the as your leg stretches out, it's stretching the elastic band. It help you use less force. And then the band then wants to pull you back in again, so using less force. Okay. Uh, it's a very useful exercise we found for high level athletes and uh, office workers and all sorts of people. So you spend, use, it's usually about two minutes worth of work on one side, then you change the other side, do two minutes there. Do another lot of that will be really useful. Um, until you find you can let the leg go totally straight and there's no motion in your hip at all. And gradually you'll find that you're able to do this with, it's, your brain can find it weird. It's like, I'm doing this, but there's no, nothing happening here. I'm not getting tight in here. And if you have back pain, because it's releasing the hip flexors, you can find gee, my back pain feels a lot better if not gone. That's why it's so good. It's called the Greyhound. And then this exercise, then this movement pattern, then taken into other kinds of motions to progress. Good luck.